This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. And we are back. Welcome to the Graveyard Club. On today's podcast, we discuss the most recent Insidious The Red Door. Listen along as we chat about the plot, what we liked and didn't like, and give our opinions. Disclaimer ahead, we'll be talking about spoilers in today's episode, so make sure you see the movie first. Let's get into it. As you know, The Graveyard Club is part of the Deluxe Edition Network a home to a number of great podcasts and every month two podcasts get granted the title of podcast of the month so for the month of july we have grown up bananas and iap radio so please make sure you're checking them out i'm gonna leave the links in the description to their shows so check them out shout out deluxe edition so we went to see this film last night and usually we go to see you know yourself they like we go to see horror films that not many people know about yeah. So this usually. was the this was the first time in a while that we went to see one that everyone knows about. Oh, fuck me, I forgot oh, how annoying it was. Oh, the first day, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, we it went to see the first day. day. Yeah. So there was a couple behind us, like about was it one or two seats up from us, and they just wouldn't stop whispering, wouldn't stop talking. It wasn't even whispering; it was loudly talking for I'd say about twenty minutes. And like you, like you don't mind a bit of talking before the film starts at the credits. Yeah, but we were twenty lads. minutes, at least twenty minutes into it. There was a scary parts coming up, and they were just having a full, long conversation. Like, why would you pay money to sit in a cinema and talk the whole time? Mm. So you, just, so, you, you just had enough. <laughs> no, well, I kept looking like death stare on them, like you know when you look over your shoulder. But they just weren't seeing me. Obviously, my head is too small. <laughs> so, this was actually really rude. But I clicked. It's like snapping our fingers at them. <laughs> Yeah, but they weren't looking at me like they weren't listening to me at all. And I wouldn't even mind. I was saying to Dee, like, come on, we just moved down, like, a, a row or two. And you were like, fuck off. No, yeah, no, absolutely not. No, I'm not moving, like, so. so. Anyway, that aside, they didn't say another word for the whole film, so. No, sometimes, um, sometimes you kind of have to do that, don't you? Put your foot down and. Well, sometimes you have in to. In fairness, here it works, because there's me thinking, like, a fucking idiot. Come on, we just moved down a couple of seats. Yeah, no, you just... Do you know, nah, I hate yeah. that stuff. That's why, like, it's been a long time since we've seen a, a good, like, uh, popular film when a force comes out. So that just, it just brings you back now to the times where there's loads of talking and screaming. Like, you know, the jump scares people overreact and all yeah. on purpose, like little kids now. I hate it. But anyway, as we'll jump in, we'll be... Yeah. Hideous. The Red Door. The Red Door. The Red Door. This ties the, the Lambert family saga together, I think, does it? I think it's meant to be the ending. So the first two Insidious films um, revolve around the same family and now this is the fifth one and it kind of ends this little mm. family's story kind of yeah. arc thing. I Cause, think anyways. Because the first two are always my favourite. We got a few sequels. Uh, the, the what Chapter 3 and then The Last Key. The Last Key, um, Insidious Yet and... And then this one, yeah. So cha- Chapter yeah. 3. And so this is the fifth one. So, arguably, the first and the second ones are the best ones. Definitely. The, and the I kind of was going into this with hope because it was the same family. Mm. So, um, and also Patrick Wilson, not only starring in it, but directing it. So, big ups. So, let, let's get into our uh, thoughts. Yeah, so it picks up really from the ending of Insidious 2, where we see Josh and Dalton kind of get their memories wiped yeah yeah hypnotized so at the end, don't they? hypnotized yeah so their memories are kind of altered so that they don't remember the whole shit that went down in the first two films and they don't remember how to astral project order for order or anything so i think it's what is it life is scary when you wake up and realize that you texted your ex a you up text yeah we all deal with those someday scaries the oh shit, stressful, nervous, can't sleep, dread feelings that hit you on Sunday evening when you're thinking about work or school or just life for tomorrow. Unfortunately, you can feel that same pit in your stomach any day of the week. Sunday scary CBD gummies were made to defeat the crap life travels with us. These are the perfect CBD gummies for professionals on the grind, super moms, students, party animals, regretful drunk sexers and everybody in between. 
I am a terrible sleeper. My scaries tend to hit me at night time, so I end up spending precious news and hours staring at the ceiling questioning life. So I'm always looking for new ways to get better sleep. Sunday scary CBD gummies help me decompress, clear my mind and fall asleep so I can wake up like a fully functioning human being. We all have the right to live scare free. So whether you need to take the edge off, calm your mind, sleep better or just chill, takes two CBD gummies every day to keep those scaries away. Let me save you with our 10% discount. Visit sundayscaries.com and use our promo code GRAVEYARD. That's GRAVEYARD, all capital letters, for 10% off at Sunday Scaries. Yeah. Is it 11? 11, 11 or 12 years later since the sec yeah. So we, yeah, so we skip forward. And the, the film and spends a lot of time with that, like Dalton kind of remembering what might have happened yeah. years ago. Like this film really is Dalton's film. It's kind of, yeah, it's very overshadowed, I think, with Dalton, like, you know, because we just kind of see at the start that uh, Josh's mom has died at the funeral, but Josh and Renee are separated. Yeah, and like, um, speaking the of... The family seems very strange. Strange, you know? like, but speaking of L Lorraine, like, it's meant to be like a, a Lambert family story. She's not in it a lot. Now, I know she doesn't have to be in it a lot. It's more about... Josh and Dalton, like, but yeah, it's very heavy father and son kind of dynamic to the point where it's really like it's it's definitely not as dark as the other. Well, the first two, it's almost it, it does have a real family kind of vibe of it or something. This film, like. yeah, it does. It's definitely not as scary as the first two, For, yeah, 100%. number one and number two. Um, and I feel like a lot of attention or not attention, sorry, screen mm. time is given to the whole Dalton college roommate. Mm. I feel like it was very, what would you call it, targeted for like teenagers. Yeah, like that like was like that almost just, a message or something. That big part just didn't need to be in it. Like, yeah. It took away from the horror and like the yeah. pace of it. Like, you know, switching and there are frat parties and blah, blah, blah. But anyway, so. But wait, before we, before we get too much into the story, Patrick Wilson is the director behind the camera. Yeah. What do you think? think? It's his first debut, wasn't it? What do you think of the film? Watch my, like, what did you think you've done right? a good job, director? Well, this is what we're talking about right now. Yeah. You're, you're jumping to the end here. No. Like a little recap. I'm going through it. Like. Oh. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, so he... Him and his roommate, Chris... Again, a lot of... This is just a little critique I found. A lot of unnecessary scenes. And then some scenes that they're trying to be funny. Mm. It's just... No. My it's problem, no like, like I thought the writing in this film was a bit wacky, like, and like especially her character came off as a bit annoying. She just sometimes. didn't sue the vibe of a horror film. That's not me saying she's not she's a bad mm. actress or whatever. Um, but them two do spend time together, like the kind of she kind of helps Dalton. Yeah, but I just feel a lot of the scenes are unnecessary. Mm. But um, yeah, a lot of unnecessary scenes. So Dalton is studying art. And through his art, he kind of starts discovering these memories of the further and uh, his astral projection. So that's kind of how we figure out. Sorry, that's how Dalton kind of kickstarts this whole yeah. thing again. Remember. Meanwhile, Josh isn't a joker. Oh, fuck he, me. I thought, I, thought actually, the I thought after the second film, you would have like, gave him a bleeding chance. Like. Oh, yeah, he just doesn't get a break. No. He hasn't gotten a break since he's been about seven years old. So, like, obviously, Literally. like, obviously, he's been like, targeted, like the, the two of them at the end of the film, at the end of the second film, were hypnotized. It must have, like, like, obviously, they're separated now. Like, it must have put a big strain. On. Welcome in to Metalhead Journeys. What is Metalhead Journeys? It's exactly how it sounds. It's a journey through the world of metal by a couple of metalheads. Are you thinking of getting into metal? Where do you begin? There's so many different subgenres. What bands are good? What albums are good? We'll provide answers to all of those questions. We'll handle all the research and do all the dirty work by listening to the good, the bad, and the ugly, so you don't have to. Classic albums, new albums, bands no one's ever heard of. Get ready as we'll applaud and criticize with the same passion. This is Metalhead Journeys. Meanwhile, Josh isn't a jocker. Oh, fuck he, me. I thought, I thought actually... The, I thought after the second film, you would have like, gave him a bleeding chance, like... Oh yeah, he just doesn't get a break. 
No. He hasn't gotten a break since he's been about seven years old. So, like, obviously, Literally. like, obviously, like, targeted, like the, the two of them at the end of the film, at the end of the second film, were hypnotized. It must have, like, like obviously they're separated now. Like, it must have put a big strain on the family. Yeah, well, I think he says he feels like he has this fog, and his memory and stuff like that. Obviously, he had a load of his memory wiped. Um, yeah. And obviously, he's gonna be foggy. But anyways, he is thinking there's something wrong with him medically. So we see him going through that. And I think the scariest scene is early enough in the film when he gets the MRI done. Yeah. Oh. Well, like, that, that was a nice... Because uh, I know a... how scary MRIs actually mm. are. Like. And you don't see too many people, like uh, too many horror films, I should say, like copying that little trope. Now, that's the first time I've seen like, uh, a jump scare in an MRI scan. So that was well, yeah. that was well done by like Patrick Wilson. I thought that was That was so well done, but I'm actually really annoyed that that was in the trailer. Yeah, yeah, the whole jump scare that was That should have been the taken out of the trailer yeah. because that was the scariest part of the film and it was the big kind of part of the trailer, I yeah. think. But I did like that. I did like it. I wish there was a bit more of that mm. because I know how peop- like how scared people are. I've had to give people Xanax before they go in for scans. Yeah. And I think that that is definitely going to play on people. Mm. Like if somebody's going in for an MRI and I say that, yeah. I know. But just before we get off that, saying the person obviously this is a spoiler the kind of whatever demon would you call it yeah that attacks him in the mri it looks like parker crane in the second one when he's dying in the hospital yeah do you know what i mean do you remember that scene that yeah. i'm talking about um and i think dalton sees him as a kid unless josh sees him as a kid or whatever but anyways that's off the topic but that was the scariest part i think for me um, like th- th- there was a lot of good parts in this film, like a lot of jumpy parts, even more so than the first film. Not more so, but the the, the bigger jumpy parts. Do you know what I mean? Like it got you got you a few times. It did but get just, me, yeah. There, there, was, there, there wasn't, wasn't a lot of them. No, and they are very. There was nothing behind them. Like it was no. just like quick changes. Yeah, like at least, like the first two had that real creep to it. Yeah, it wasn't necessarily it wasn't. all about the jump. And scares. it was very like dialogue heavy. Very dialogue heavy, very Dalton discovering himself, oh, yeah. Josh, you know what I mean? And yeah, again, very, very heavy on the family dynamic, the tension. And yeah, there was a lot of A lot of emotional the in this, like. Yeah. Um, out, of all the, out of all the Insidious so far in the franchise, this one is the, the gloomiest. Do you know what I mean? Very Real gloomy, sad, very sad. Mean? But I just want to throw a little spanner in because there was one scene in it where I just think that they missed the ballpark. Now, this is just me. So, um... As we said, Dalton and his roommate Chris are discovering, would we say, like the astral projection and things. But anyways, there's a scene where she Googles, do you know the the two boys from the first and the second one? Yeah. The, Tucker and Chris. Yeah, the, like Tucker? the ghost investigators, yeah. Sorry, Tucker and Specs. Yeah, yeah. And I think they're called Spectral Sighting, I think. Mm-hmm. They have this like little franchise or whatever. Um, They have a YouTube channel, but they're Googling this and... That's literally, we see like one little 30 second clip of them. And then that was it. And then boom, yeah, they, they, yeah, they know what's going on now. Yeah. No, it's not that they know what's going on. They just had one little thing. One little 30 second clip and it's like, oh, see, look, astral projection is a real thing. And then Chris, oh, why do we keep saying Chris? Tucker and Specs are just gone then we don't see them yeah. again. Oh, that's we're, their only little cameo in that film, isn't it? It actually, it sad... where I was thinking... Same alternative as- scene which is what i would have thought would have been better instead of this whole fucking painting shit yeah painting and it's all coming through the paints but anyways um i think they oh, we'll, get, we'll get to that part won't we? we'll get to- i think they should have reached out to tucker and specs and that's how they should have found out yeah yeah that would have made a lot more that sense would have brought everybody back together like mm. that would have brought a full circle, mm. circle. and it would have gave them a proper circle. uh proper cameo as well circle yeah <laughs> Did you I say circle? circle and i said it twice um i just that was a little alternative saying i feel like should have been done me thinking i'm a director i don't know but i just feel like they missed mm. the ballpark in that one but anyways miss you tucker and specs yeah spectral yeah. sliders or spectral sliders. And i told you one of them directed one of the sequels anyway but yeah um but yeah not a lot of jump scares i feel like the jump scares, they weren't jump scares. They were quick. And loud like, noise. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I still know? thought they were pretty effective, I'll be honest No, no, they were. I'm just saying it was not. Nothing new. Yeah. 
nothing new, which is okay, whatever. Yeah. Modern um, horror, I'm used to this show now, and yeah. at this stage, like so. But, um, so they discover at the exact same time, which is convenient, about the further and the astral projection, and Renee tells mm. um, Josh again. It completely skips over. All of a sudden, it jumps at a scene, and he's sitting on the couch, and he's like, "Wow!" Oh yeah, yeah. Again, yeah. it's totally skipped, which I would have enjoyed seeing that. Yeah, there's parts of this film where it it can drag, and then there's parts where the, the story's just like it's just pissing it's through. Just, it's like we're not focusing on what we need to be focusing on, like the scenes with Josh and his dad. Totally, very quickly ran through that that whole history of his dad was in the mental institution and he could astral project and yeah. he killed himself and blah blah blah. That was literally skimmed by. Mm. But there was a good probably like forty minutes of these two fucking idiots in college. Mm. And another thing, and fucking like <laughs> Dalton and is fucking painting. And the painting thing as well, and it's like even do you remember when he forced yeah. his first class? Well, he, he was at a class in art school and anyway, and his. T- the teacher's talking about like drawing shadows and all those types of it almost coined it this is when i actually just activates and dalton's mind so every like the rest of the film is about this painting now that's getting more detailed as the day goes on he's kind of reminded me of it. the known do you remember the known and it, it was a lot about the painting or am i just the no oh. not the known sorry oh that was the, the conjuring. Conjuring. yeah 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 yeah, she, yeah you, he, he drew the demon he drew the known yeah yeah, and yeah. so yeah, so he's ba- yeah. J- Dalton has basically been kind of drawing, well, painting this picture day after day with a bit more detail. And you think sometimes it's going to be the the red lipstick demon, but it ends up turning out to be Josh, the father. Yeah. Towards the end of it, he's been seeing him. But the memory of him memory when of he was him. younger, and Josh was possessed, and he had to go into the yeah. It's called the further, and you know the whole ending of the second one, mm. and this one ends the exact same way. Josh Very goes similar. into the forder. Josh makes his way into the forder after knowing about the forder for about two minutes. Yeah. Randomly, oh, Grant, I remember how to actually project. Just, <laughs> just yeah. closes his eyes yeah. on the couch yeah. and he pops in. Exact um, same um, thing he, f- he rescues. Sorry, he rescues Dalton. He finds Dalton in the red faced demon's lair, whatever you want to call it, rescues him again. And for a second, I thought he was going to die. Because yeah. he said, It ends with me. The yeah. same thing that his dad said. I thought he was going to die. For a split second there, I thought they were going to end it like that. I oh, like, kind of wish that they did. This is going to sound awful because at least we would have got an ending. Instead of it just all reverting back to happy families again. Yeah, yeah. So At yeah, least we would have got an ending on this story arc. Like, or, you know. So technically, he let Dalton tr- like through the door, which Dalton is out now the forder and Josh is still there holding the door shut. Sure. Dalton starts whipping a lot of black paint on it. So Dalton runs back over to the fucking painting. And realises that's the door behind his fucking dad. And starts, as you just had saying, and whips out a load of black paint and just paints. So that's all you had to do in the first place. So in retrospect, like... In retrospect, you could have either not did the picture at all. Or did the picture and burned it or just painted over it. So Or just fucking painted it over. So nearly two hours later anyways, we get to it. They're kind of... The family is back on... There's a small little scene where him and Renee are kind of, you know, talking. And you're like, oh, but they get back together. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Again, really does like totally skims over their relationship. It's all about him and Dalton. Mm. Um, yeah, we get we don't really get a good closure. I don't think, even like it's meant to be the, the Lambert family saga ending. Like, but like I think it is. I it think it is, or maybe I'm just focusing on that. But that's I what I was. Teary, that's what it was kind of projected as. Aiming though, no? at, yeah, yeah. Well, even the trailer said the Lambert family. Like, I just it wasn't wasn't the gold coin the. Uh, do you know what I mean? Ending. Yeah, it didn't satisfy me. Do you know? We randomly see Elise once as like a little fucking mirage at the end. Josh doesn't know yeah. who she is. She doesn't stand around <laughs> to explain or say, by the way, Josh, I know you your whole life, blah, blah, blah. Again, it appears, talks crap for a bit, a minute or two, and then just disappears. Mm. I feel like, yeah, or maybe I'm just being greedy and I want too much. I want like too much scenes. Do you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. But... And see, I think Patrick Wilson, he, he didn't write the film. So a lot of the stuff very like, complex. Like, Doobie is an energy drink you make at home. With the market being saturated with other companies, it can be hard to find a good quality one. 
Doobie is not only high quality but comes with tons of flavours to choose from. There's really something there for everyone. Use the Graveyard Club at the checkout for 10% off your order. You don't want to miss out on this. So make sure you use the links below to get to the website. That's 10% off your order at the checkout with the Graveyard Club code. But and see, I think Patrick Wilson, he, he didn't write the film. So a lot of the stuff very like complex, like it'd be the writing in it, so, like so, like the the writing and the, the plot in this story overall, like a little bit weak. Come yeah, on. it doesn't mesh. I feel like like the, the, the force too insidious, like creep the fuck out of me. Like do you know what I mean? Like no, this was good. Like I wouldn't be rushing back to watch it again. No, I think it's only good because it's attached to the first and second one. If this was Has a, them if characters. this was a standalone horror film. And the characters were just changed to somebody else that weren't related. Oh, yeah. It would not be really good. Mm. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, t- that's actually a good point. So I think I'm just associating with it with yeah. the first two and then I'm thinking. Um, but I think overall 7 out of 10. Would you, like, comparing it to like, the other ones in the franchise, where would you put it? I would put it as the third. I would go the first one as the first. The second one is the second, and then this is the third. And, and then, then the other two are just fucking garbage, to be honest with you. Did you not like them? No, I didn't. I didn't like them at all. I could, I could, I could, re- I could respect the other ones, but yeah, my my order would probably be yeah, the, the first two. This would be the third. Just be as you just so said. So the exact same the, as the, me. The, the, yeah, the characters, <laughs> the characters. It's more the characters, if anything. But I did enjoy the other ones as well. I'll be honest. The last key wasn't very good, but. No. I did like that. What did did you think of Patrick Wilson behind the camera? I think he did well. As I said, not a lot of jump scares. He relied on the transitioning and loud noises, I feel, a little bit too much. Um, but I did like, you know, some of the scenes where there's things in the background. I did like that as well. Mm. I feel like this is his little jumping off. Like, I do hope that we get to see more horror films directed by yeah. him. Because he is the goal, like. Yeah. Uh, the Conjuring. Fun. You know what I mean? Like, he the is... The Horror King. Sugar Daddy. Yeah. He is um, Ed Warren. You know what I mean? Like, so... And then he's also a director. He's everything. My opinion... He's everything. <laughs> <laughs> My opinion, although he, I say he had James Wan and all stuck to the, to his hip while he was directing <laughs> If you know what I mean, because it's a lot of the tropes and a lot of the the angles is is very like the older Insidious, but he's going to be a busy man after this film because I think is a glo- I think globally this film's after making or it's on its way to making seventy million. It's after beating now Indiana Jones, that to beat now other like Indiana Jones is a huge franchise. Like you know what I mean, it's after beating out that. Yeah. So I which I'm not surprised. I hate Indiana Jones, no, well, but if we're talking like big books wise, I know what you mean. For a horror film to be out Indiana Jones, that's something. Do you know what I mean? Like, but in fairness, you can look back in the, uh, in the other Insidious. They always done fairly well at the box office. I think it's it. They it, did. They they, they, do. they are good. They actually are good. Like when it, when a horror that's franchise it, you know. has a big name like that, it, it prints money. Like, like do you know what I mean? Like, because all these teenagers, so let's go see something scary and all sorts of. Insidious is now that uh, big one. So I think, pa- yeah, back to Patrick Wilson. I say be a busy man. After this, well, I hope so because get a man that can do both. He can act and he can direct, and yeah. I want to see more of. And him. I said, oh, you probably you're probably more mature into directing now because he's fifty years old. He is not. I swear to God, he's fifty years, and he doesn't he look great. Yes, he does look great. This is what I'm saying. So if you're watching, Damn. if you're listening to this, Patrick Wilson, uh, you are. You look great in that last film. Yum. <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> I didn't know he was fifty. Silver Fox. But um, yeah. Seven out of ten. What would you say? <sighs> I'd give it a good. So, yeah, seven seven point two. It right. gives. It does what I it guess, says. It's yeah. just for the Lambert family saga. It, it should have it gave it a little bit more. To be honest, it it gets a seven out of ten for an extra point because it was released in time for my B day. Oh yeah, that's your and B day. Yeah. Usually because my birthday is July. There's never a horror film out. Yeah. Because like it's July and it's not the season, but this year it was raining, and it was this film was out, and I just said yes. Oh, it came out yes. a fucking pair of time. But the so one thing I'll just it did say... It get like, an extra point from me. The one thing I will say, it's just a pain in the hole seeing it on the fourth day it came out. That irked you, and I don't know, yeah. It well, was, in fairness, it, it wasn't even that was just them talking behind us. Like, there was other people talking in the cinema as well. And did I see two people leaving, or did they come back? Uh, 
No, I think I think they came back. But me and you have over the time seen people walk out. I was just going to add that in. I thought I seen somebody leave, but they actually came back. So yeah, like, it, there was that much commotion going on in that little oh. theater. Like it's just fucking. That's what I'm saying. But, bring bring back on like the real independent horror films that nobody knows about. The next one that are on the list that you can look out for a review maybe is called Talk to Me. Oh, oh my god! I can't wait for that one. If you have, if you haven't seen, if you haven't seen the trailer for Talk to Me, it's coming out on July twenty eighth. Definitely. Oh, actually, watch. yeah. This could, Fuck, this could be contender for one for of the scarier one. ones this year. What do you reckon? I am excited for that one. I'm fucking excited for that one. Yeah, that one's coming out. Uh, the There's fuck something about that trailer that just now I can probably totally regret this, and I might come on here and be like, it was shit. But there's something about that trailer that intrigues me. Yeah. Should I, I say? I, for people who know what we're talking about, like it's a real, it's a real modern take on like, like a, probably a, a possession sort of film. Like it's not, it's not your, it's definitely not your typical. Yeah, it's like possession gone viral. Gone and viral, They're exactly. all live streaming, um, they're live streaming possessions. Also, you never apologize for your sinus sounds. Oh, sorry about that. I'm, I'm, I've allergies at the moment. I've got allergies. As the, as the Americans would and say, his, his on, on nose is running like a tap here in my ear, so I can only imagine what's going on. I hope like. that I hope that doesn't come up, p- p- get picked up on the podcast. Well, I'll put it out there now, so I'll say. <laughs> um, but but yeah. yeah, so the, the, there's more there's me. more to come. So Insidious Five, aka the Red Door. You were saying seven. Seven out of ten, yeah. Good, solid. Um, seven. Seven point two. I would recommend to people to go see it. Though. It was oh, great yeah, to was. see it in the cinema. There was it was it. good to see. Yeah, it was. It was for yeah. for the scares themselves. I I thought it was worth seeing it in the cinema. Don't wait until it comes out on streaming. Like go, go, DSF and go see the horror films in the cinema. The only type of films that can. are worth seeing in the cinema. I think. If, imagine yeah, imagine going was. imagine going to the cinema and paying money to see a fucking comedy. But see, there's sick people out there that like do that. I don't understand that. I'd always wait for a comedy to come out streaming. Horror films is the only. Why I'm never money. waiting on comedies to come out. Sorry, there's actually a moth in the corner. I need to get out here. I have to end this right now. Why? So Thank if you're you, if, if you made it this far, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Uh, subscribe on the YouTube. Uh, like, subscribe, save me. Everything, everything. Use the links in the uh, the link below. The description below and check out the podcast of the month. Right, I'm gonna run. See you next one. Bye. Are you ready? We're ready to forget the further, once and for all.